Hey there, folks. Didn't see you there. I was just hanging out. Ah, oh, tore my ACL. Just hanging out in the new addition to the channel. And that is a 2020 low Stinger 195C. Wait, is that it? Yeah, 195C. Had to double check. It's okay. I'm not a professional. It's fine. Andrew, what do you think, man? I love it, dude. What do you think? That's probably good audio right there. Mm. What do you think, man? I'm jealous. Jealous? Blue? Blue something? Got to come up with a name with this thing, but that's not what we're doing right this second. So, obviously, we got a new boat. This has been a long time coming. Okay, I've been hinting about this for what it seems like months because it has been a long time. Last Guggen Squad member to get a boat. What do you think about that, Andrew? <laughs> Wait, no, Mike doesn't have one yet, does he? Mike, do you have one? One rod? I don't know. I'm pretty sure the rest of the guys got one. Just now getting mine. Whole complicated thing with Corona. COVID has just screwed up everybody. So fishermen are not immune to that. Boat dealers are not immune to that. It's kind of screwed up everybody, but we have it now. That's the important thing. So me and my buddy Andrew behind the camera, Mr. Mm -hmm. Badger there, we took a drive. <laughs> we're gonna get that nickname. I'll, I'll, so we'll explain to you guys one day why we call, we're gonna call Andrew Badger. Anyways, we took a drive up to Gunnersville, Alabama, up to Freedom Marine. And there we were met with the senior sales manager, Jeremy. He hooked it up with the 2020 low. First of all, this thing is massive, okay? The deck on this thing is absolutely huge. Me and Andrew have already spent a little bit of time in it. I mean, it is still brand new. There's only like an hour on the motor. Me and Andrew have spent some time in this thing and it is massive. I mean, we could put at least two or three more anglers on this boat at any given time fishing out of any direction. While we were at Freedom Marine, we had Jeremy kind of give us a, a quick little rundown on all the electronics and special equipment that's on the boat. I'm gonna run that guys for you right now. You got the Garmin 10s. Yeah, Garmin 10s, okay. Is Ultra this... X80. Okay, Ultra Gotta go with the Panoptics if you're running Garmin. Now for, pan, for people that don't know, Panoptics. That's the live scope. Live scope. So that's like the video game it's, mode. Yeah, that's it's, when you're, it's you can the see real the fish. live 3D images. Right. You just it's drop the lure, you can right see the lure now. coming yeah. down in front of the fish. You, you can, can see follow the fish it, come up. the whole water column. Right. Even fish in top water, you can watch your lure all the way back to the boat. You how, can see how many feet away it is. How far out does it go, like in front of the boat? You can set that. Okay. It's gotcha. got all the custom settings to go in. It Man. just depends on what kind of fishing you're doing. Yeah. Of course, you're going to want it closer. Right. If you're shallow water stuff. The technology is just crazy, man. It's loaded. So are these Garmin's, are these like the new models, the 10s? It's, I think it's the 108 Ultra Mat. Okay. Or Echo Mat. What's, uh, what's the advantage of these Garmin's like versus like a, a Hummingbird or Lorenz? I mean, they all have their, they're all good yeah. in certain ways, but what's good about the Garmin's? Really, the Garmin, the Panoptics sets Pan yeah. way ahead. Oh, so the other ones don't have that yet? No. Really? Okay, no. I didn't Hummingbird know they were. Hummingbird has the 360. Right. Lorenz has the Live, but okay. it's not. See, I didn't know they were the only ones that had that, but that makes, okay. That this makes is their sense. second generation gotcha. of the Panoptics setup. And the Ultrax, I mean, the beauty of this thing is the spot lock. Spot lock is yeah. where it's at. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. We were talking about like having power poles versus like having spot lock, and it's like, it's almost like spot lock, unless you're like a super grassy area, like yeah. super, super heavy grass, and you can't do anything with a trolling motor, but nine times out of 10, setting this is like just as good as having Or fishing bedded balls. fish, that's the only Bedding thing. fish, yeah. That's your only that's, disadvantage. Right, you're not gonna wanna blow that. But when you're yeah. ledge fishing in 25 foot of yeah, water, yeah. you can't drop your poles exactly, down and anchor right. up. Exactly, right. Yeah, 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 for sure. We got a what, 150 Merc back there? 154 yeah. stroke Mercury. How fast would this thing go? Probably upper 40s, upper low 40s, 50s. Low 50s. It's just going to depend on how you load it out. Yeah, well, that's faster than I even really go, so. <laughs> <laughs> Not a big speed guy yet, but maybe with this thing, it will kind of turn me into a speed guy. Well, we are ready to take it out, man. I appreciate you, dude, Jeremy. Hit the water. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you, guys. Time to hit the water. Like, I'm just like looking at this deck. It's going to be super easy to keep clean. Big. Well, I thought you were going to be right there. <laughs> big shout out to Low for sponsoring today's video and for providing such a cool boat and what makes this boat so good to me okay but and again this is all my perspective fiberglass boats are obviously they're bigger they're probably a little bit more stable they can run a little bit faster they can handle the big water a little bit better but here's the thing about aluminum boats they are extremely forgiving and what that means is somebody like me who's very hard on my equipment andrew can attest to that <laughs> yeah. very hard on my equipment because they are just tools that allow me to do my job which is to make content for you guys so an aluminum boat is gonna give me that forgiving hole. That way, if I hit a little bit of a stump, 
going 30 miles an hour, it's not going to necessarily damage my hull. It might put a little ding in it, but it's gonna bounce right off of it because it's such a light boat. And that's really the appeal to me. Since I've never owned a boat before, I wanted an aluminum boat for my first boat because I'm gonna hit stuff. I'm gonna run too shallow because I don't know. I'm gonna do things that you might not wanna do in a fiberglass boat. I'm gonna get in some extremely skinny water, shallow, because that's kind of what I love to do is fish really shallow, especially springtime, that kind of thing. But yeah, it's a great little boat. And I think it's gonna hold up really well. Starting at the front of the boat, Jeremy kind of told you all the pieces. I'm gonna tell you why I wanted them and why I'm so glad I have them. So you've got the Men Coda Ultrex right here. This is the 80, right? Or is it 82? 80 pound thrust, okay? 80 pound thrust is a lot for an aluminum boat. So that's gonna give us all the power we need on the front end to troll around, look for those bass. But the Ultrex, what this thing is known for, what you guys should know, is a little feature called spot lock, all right? And when you engage the spot lock, the trolling motor then puts basically a GPS pin on where your boat is located, like down to the foot of where you are on the lake. And its job is to keep you in that location. Now, of course, the wind's gonna blow and it may bring your back end around a little bit, but the front of your boat is going to stay where you engage the spot lock. That's an incredibly important feature for several different reasons. Let's say you're fishing offshore, and you find a good ledge, like Lake Gunnersville, Lake Ufall, a lot of southern lakes. This time of year are known for ledge fishing. You just hit that spot lock, you find that ledge on your graph, and you, you hit the spot lock, you stay right there on it. You don't have to worry about drifting with the wind. Plus, when you're in deep water, power poles do you no good. Power pole is essentially the same thing. It's gonna anchor your boat down, but in deep water, it's just not gonna help you at all, obviously. It's not gonna reach the bottom. So that spot lock is going to be a huge part of a, a fisherman like me who's kind of a beginner fisherman or an intermediate fisherman. It's gonna really help me when I find a good spot, stay right there and catch as many fish as possible. Next up is going to be the graphs, and they were provided to us from Garmin. And now these things are the top of the line. They're brand new to this year. And what they have, they also have a feature that really nobody else has, and that is the pan optics, the live scope. Okay, that's like the video game. You guys have heard about this. I know you have. I've seen it before on Lake Fort Guy's boat. <laughs> that must be another subscriber. We already met one down here. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Lake Fort Guy has this exact same setup on his really nice Phoenix fiberglass boat. But the panoptic live scope, what it allows you to do is actually see fish in real time. You can see their outline, you can see them moving. You can even drop your bait down on them like you're ice fishing. See your lure fall on the water column and watch that fish come up and eat it. It's an incredible feature that I had never used before. And I'm gonna be honest with you, that seems like a pretty advanced feature that I'm gonna have to take some time and, and learn and actually before I can put it to use. But it's an incredible feature, not to mention the mapping technology on this Garmin it looks so clean the fishing map with all the contour it's got everything you need to know about a lake it's just incredible we've spent a little bit of time in it so far i can already tell you it's the best mapping features i've ever seen now, that might not mean much because i haven't seen that many mapping features but i am in love with these two units already and the bonus we've got them in the front and the back now, that's not really something you typically see on aluminum boats at least i don't i don't see them i feel like that's kind of like your tournament angler you know hardcore angler fiberglass boat it has like the front unit and the back unit but hey we got them both, and we're certainly not going to complain about having both. Bringing us to the back of the boat, this is literally the muscle. This is what propels the boat, and it's so important to have a motor that's going to match your fishing style or just your, your human style. And my human style is I want to be bigger and stronger than everybody else. Right, Andrew? Oh, yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about. And a 150 Mercury four-stroke is going to be bigger and stronger than just about any aluminum boat that you're going to see out there. Not every single one. I'm sure there's some 200s out there on maybe some really big aluminum boats, but I don't see too many 150 four-strokes on an aluminum boat especially this size. So we are going to be flying around the lake, dude. I can't wait to break this thing in because we are still breaking it in. So you're supposed to kind of baby it. We ran it a little bit today. I think we got it up to like 35, but it'll go in the 50s. So this thing will fly. That's because it's such a light boat. You pair such a powerful motor with a light boat, and you're going to freaking fly. So this is going to be what gets us around all these lakes, big lakes, small lakes, big ponds, whatever, rivers. This is going to be what gets us around for the next year or however long we have this boat. And I could not be happier with this motor. One of the best out there right now. Now hopping up into the boat. Now, I mean, I'm not gonna bore you guys and literally like, oh look, it's a compartment. No way, there's another one. But here, there's a couple, there's a few cool features about this boat. First thing you're gonna notice, there's no carpet in this boat. 
which was really odd for, to me when I first saw it because I've never, I haven't seen that many boats, maybe like a river boat or a John boat or something like that. But this is going to be so much easier to keep clean. Now that may not matter to a lot of people, but I'm kind of a, you know, I treat my stuff pretty rough. It gets kind of, gets kind of dirty, get fish guts in here, get fish slime. I mean, there's a ton of things you can spill, chewing tobacco spit, beer if Andrew's here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> any of that kind of stuff so this is going to allow us to just spray this thing down you could probably take this to a freaking car wash dude and just it's just going to knock all the dirt off this keep it nice and clean keep everything off the deck that's a pretty cool feature there's also not one which normally i mean any bass boat's going to have your live well right here this one's even still got like minnow buckets and stuff which might actually come into play one day for us andrew but it's not got it's about to start raining oh my gosh this weather has been crazy today it not only has one, it has two live wells. It's got one in the front. So if you were doing like live bait fishing or maybe you had like some minnows and you had some live bluegills in one that you wanted to use as bait, and then you had the actual live well that you can keep your best five bass, whatever the case is, I think having two live wells, I mean, it's kind of one of those things like you may not think that you need it, but I think for us, for what I do, I do a lot of live bait fishing, it's gonna come in handy. We got our big old bait compartment right here. Let's see if there's anything in there. Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> it looks like the Guggen Squad literally just, and there's just nothing but Guggen Green in here. So we've got some money bags, obviously. I mean, I already had these things put in money bags a long time ago when I first knew I was getting a boat. Didn't realize it was gonna take this long, but it's all good, it's here. So I already had some money bags like filled with just lunker logs. All my favorite Guggen Bait soft plastic is there's the Crack and Craw. We've got Slim Shake Worms. We got the Saucy Swimmers. Mondo worms, of course the bandeater bugs because you got to have those. There's tackle boxes, of course. I got a top water box, a crankbait box, a terminal tackle box. Got some new, brand new popping filthy frogs available at shopcrawls.com. Got some of those down here. I mean, we got everything, man. So now we really just need to be rigged up and like ready to fish. I'm kind of ready to go here. So yeah, those are the features guys. Like I said, we're not gonna go through and bore you with all the minor stuff because it just that stuff just doesn't matter to me. What I'm all about is like fishability. Can I fish in this boat? Can I optimize all the features of this boat? And for me, yes. I mean, it's a perfect size boat for me. It's huge. It's big enough for me and Andrew and another person or two to come along. It's perfect enough to like do some camping on. It's perfect enough to do like river fishing because it's that like kind of like almost a flat bottom like aluminum boat. <laughs> so it's perfect for river. I mean, we've got the monster motor so we can tackle big lakes too. We've got all the special bells and whistles that these boats just don't typically have. So big shout out to everybody that made this boat happen for me. And really you guys made it happen for me because this channel has grown so much over the past year and a half that now we've got a freaking boat. And look guys, here's the thing. We're not gonna stop pond fishing. We're not gonna stop bank fishing. We're not gonna stop fishing in the SS Minnow Johnson. We're not gonna stop wading down creeks, almost dying with Badger right here. Shout out to you guys who remember that. We're not gonna stop doing any of that. All this means is we can now expand the kind of content that we do a little bit more. As you guys know, we're doing military vlogs. We're doing, of course, fishing. We're always gonna do fishing. We're never gonna stop fishing. But this is gonna allow us to do like bow fishing, spear fishing. We've got so many cool ideas that we needed a boat for. And now we have that boat, so watch out. Some fire content is coming your way. So you need to do a couple things for me. Smash the thumbs up button for our sponsors for hooking this channel up with this badass boat. Also, get in the comments section. Let me and Badger know what kind of videos you want us to do. I'm trying to get used to calling you Badger. We're gonna make this thing stick, okay? Andrew, Badger, AO Fishing, all the same person. And three, make sure you're subscribed to the channel with the bell notification enabled because we're gonna continue to put out five to six videos a week and they're gonna start to change. There's gonna be all different kinds of crazy outdoor related content so do not miss an upload so anything else to add buddy i'm just happy for you man yeah we've it's gonna be cool man it's gonna be really cool i'm excited when we picked it up yesterday we were like kids in a candy store we were ready to get this thing in the water and of course it dumped rain on us last night <laughs> trying to fish like gunnersville but that's a whole other story it doesn't matter now we are going to move forward with our lives onward and upward and we're going to be able to do so because of this boat folks we'll see you later stay tuned